number uh, six. 28-year-old female with an incidentally discovered humerus bone lesion. And we're not really being fair because we didn't tell you what it looked like, how big it was, or radiographs or anything. So that's kind of not the way you would do this in real life. But, but this one has a kind of distinct pattern, I think, so it's fair enough, I guess. Right. So one of the things that I looked at and noticed was the uh, curvilinear trabecula of the bone yeah. itself. And... Um, it's just kind of haphazard with the bone formation. Normal bone wouldn't obviously look like. Right, exactly. They're definitely different sizes. There's way more of them, and they're smaller and kind of irregular sizes and shapes. The other thing you can help to tell apart that they're not normal, you know, bone uh, trabeculae that are entrapped is they're woven bone. So when you go down to higher power, if you this is where flipping your condenser can help. You don't see any of the normal lamellar bone lines like you'd see in mature right. bone, lamellar bone, because even the trabeculae are made of lamellar bone. Okay, but these are actually made of, you can see all the collagens just very closely, haphazardly interwoven with itself. It's a little easier to see under the microscope um, rather than on a video. But so that is a sign that this is this is new bone that's abnormal. This bone is not part of the normal native bone. This is this is new um, abnormal bone that's being produced. So that's one little trick here. Okay, good. So what were you thinking of then? Uh, so I was thinking fibrous dysplasia. Very good. And that's exactly what it is. It's a real nice example of fibrous dysplasia. Again, in real life, we always want to know if the radiology fits. For bone, you always have to know the radiology or you'll get yourself in trouble. And there are some other things that can come in the differential with this, but this is a really classic looking one. So very, very nice example. And so you have these um, irregular bone trabeculae that people in the past have likened to uh, Chinese characters. But as, uh, again, Dr. Ro, my mentor, who is who's Korean, not Chinese, but, you know, he said there are no Chinese characters that look like this. So he's like, so whoever <laughs> described it did not know what Chinese letters um, or uh, or uh, symbols actually looked like. So I thought that was a good point that he said. But but the point is that these irregular kind of haphazard, weird looking shaped trabeculae, they are made of woven bone and they also do not have osteoblasts around them, right? So a lot of times in reactive bone, like if you have a fracture and you're making new bone, you can make some little bone that looks like this, but it'll usually have a bunch of big juicy osteoblasts around it because they're laying down the new bone. But here the bone is being created. I don't know exactly if it's, I don't exactly know how it works, but the, the bone is actually just being laid down right in the midst of these fibroblastic spindled cells. So that's the way the trabeculae look. They don't usually have osteoblasts around them, although I will put out as a caveat towards the periphery of a lesion of fibrous dysplasia, as it kind of erodes and pushes into the adjacent bone, sometimes you can see some reactive background native bone trying to repair at the edge and it can have osteoblasts. So I have seen that before. But, and then in between the bone, you have these very bland, very benign looking spindle cells and they have collagen in the background. So this is the classic, but there are actually a lot of other different variations and patterns that you can have. You can sometimes have hemorrhage and sometimes cyst formation, and um, sometimes they can be more cellular. There are rare forms of low-grade osteosarcomas that can mimic fibrous dysplasia, and that can be exceptionally challenging, and that's way outside the scope of what we're gonna discuss here because I still struggle with those kinds of cases. Um, but this is a nice example of a fibrous dysplasia of a bone and let's see what the other um, questions are here and I, I have definitely seen this before where it's incidentally discovered sometimes the patient's had it for a long time and then they have trauma and it fractures through it because it kind of weakened the bone sometimes they'll have come in from a motor vehicle accident or something and they happen to say oh yeah you have a rib fracture but also there's a lytic lesion in your humerus because they're doing an x-ray because the patient had trauma so so a lot of times bone lesions particularly benign ones get discovered incidentally in that way um, where the patient didn't come in because of symptoms, <clears throat> they were working them up for something else and then came across it. And oh, you can have ones, particularly like in the jaw, you can have fibrous dysplasia. Sometimes they get these really funny, like little um, little round, like nodules of very dense um, uh, calcification, almost like somomatous looking body. So they can really have a wide range of features. But I think this is a nice one to start with as a kind of a first foundational uh, look at fibrous <coughs> dysplasia. So what... Um, what syndrome can this be associated with? Uh, McCune-Albright. McCune-Albright, exactly. And I actually have a friend who is a bone pathologist who has McCune-Albright syndrome. And um, yeah, so that can go along with um, polyostatic fibrous dysplasia, so multifocal <clears throat> fibrous dysplasias. 
And then they also can have cat ALA macules and um, uh, endocrine abnormalities and probably other stuff that I'm not um, familiar with or remembering at the time. So those are the kind of main things I think of though. All right, fibrous dysplasia.